Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and today we have finally learned some more details about what's going on with Battlefield 4. DICE just released an article outlining some of the balance changes that are going to be happening in the near future, and they are looking fantastic. There are some things that are puzzling to me, and I'll talk about them here in a second, but overall, all the things that they're doing, I love the direction that they're heading, and I cannot wait for this to launch. And so the first thing that has me all riled up is that DICE is finally nerfing the mobile anti-air vehicle. The 20mm cannon is going to have its bolt velocity drop from 1,200 meters per second down to 800 meters per second. That is a 400 meters per second decrease. And what DICE is trying to do here is that right now in Battlefield 4, one of the problems with this vehicle is that you can sit in your deployment and still dominate the airspace. You can snipe helicopters from across the map, you can take down jets, and since you're in your deployments, no one can really sneak up on you. You don't have to worry about infantry kind of sneaking around and placing C4 or launching RPGs at you, and so you can pretty much be in the comfort and safety of your deployment, but still dominate the airspace, and so that was a little broken. Uh, they are also gonna be reducing the total amount of anti-air missiles that the vehicle can hold from six and down to four, but probably the greatest change Change is that the active radar missiles are finally seeing a nerf. You will now have to have the missile a little bit closer to the vehicle before it will lock on, and so hopefully what this means, I'm crossing my fingers, is that this will now require some skill on the part of the anti-air driver to get these things to lock on and, and hit the target, because right now, especially if you are in a attack helicopter, these things are the bane of your existence. Even if you were across the map, because the attack helicopters are so slow and clunky, they're, they're not very maneuverable, it's not too difficult for the mobile anti-air driver to lock on with these missiles. And even if your pilot knows what they're doing, they're trying to avoid the missiles, they're trying to use their countermeasures, it's still not an easy task for you to, to survive the thousands of rockets flying towards you. You had to be playing on something like Siege of Shanghai or Dawnbreaker to use the buildings to block a line of sight. And anything else, if you were playing on like Gold Med Railways, it was almost a guaranteed kill on the part of the, the mobile anti-air driver. And so I'm crossing my fingers that these changes are gonna finally balance out the airspace. We want the, the mobile anti-air to still be very good at taking out air vehicles, but as things stand right now, it was just a little bit too good. Uh, and then the final thing, at least with regard to anti-air, is that these missiles are no longer gonna have as large of a physical impact when they hit a helicopter, so that they hopefully are not going to be rolling over so often. I can't tell you how annoying it is when you're in an attack helicopter and you get hit by one stinger missile and then your entire chopper just flips on over and you plummet to the ground and it gets instantly destroyed. Like the missile itself normally wouldn't have been able to take you out. It probably would have been doing around 37% of your health, but because this added mechanic was in place, it basically just took you from 100 to zero with one stinger missile that didn't really take a whole lot of skill on the part of the enemy. And so this change I think is gonna be great for pilots out, all pilots out there. Like I'm sure this is a problem for everyone. I think it pretty much affects every single helicopter out there. And so this is a fantastic change. One thing that took me by surprise and was a little baffling is that DICE is gonna be reducing the effective range of the M2 slam. And so if you put this on the side of a building or on the side of the structure, instead of having the tank only needing to be six meters away for you to get the kill and having them detonate, they now need to be three meters away for you to get that nice little fireball. And DICE's justification for doing this is that the M2 slam is used way more often than the, than the anti-tank mines, and so they want to reduce its effectiveness so more people gravitate on over towards the anti-tank mines. And the reason why I find this so puzzling is that that's not why people use the M2 slam. The, the reason why they use that is because it's so much more versatile. You can put this on the ground and use it as an anti-tank mine. You put three down, it will be a guaranteed kill on every single vehicle. You can put these on the side of the wall, like I just mentioned, but you can also put this on the tanks themselves and once they accelerate, they then explode. And so they're essentially a guaranteed C4 kill. There's a lot of uses that you can do with the M2 slam, and the only thing that you can really do with the anti-tank mine is place them down at your feet in the middle of the road and hope a tank rolls by. I think DICE kind of missed the mark on this one. If they wanted less people to use the M2 slam, I think what they probably should have done is increase the effectiveness of the anti-tank mines. The main reason why I don't touch that gadget is because if you want to get a guaranteed kill on any type of vehicle, you need to place down three mines, and that's the same for the M2 Slam. If a LAV rolls over two mines, 
it will only do 97% of the vehicle's health. And so if they're an engineer, which they probably are, and since you're probably across the map because you're not camping your, your, uh, your mines, they'll just jump out, quickly repair it. It may take them a good 30 seconds to repair them, but they're right back into the action. And so I have a feeling if they made it so that it only required two mines to destroy every single type of vehicle, then more people would gravitate on over and use that particular gadget. But until then, just because the M2 Slam is so much more versatile for everything I just mentioned, I just don't see people wanting to use anything other than that for that slot. The attack helicopter is also seeing some loving, and this is coming in the form of the gunner position now doing more direct damage. This is awesome. I cannot tell you how annoying it is to be in the gunner position in doing no damage against enemy vehicles, especially when you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a little bird. I honestly feel useless when I go against a little bird because it just does not do any direct damage at all. You may do 10 to 20% of the enemy's health, but because they usually have a rep bot in there, they're able to get that up to full health in under a couple of seconds, and so you honestly feel useless in those types of engagements. And so hopefully, it's, it's probably not gonna be a huge buff, but I'm crossing my fingers that will at least now be somewhat effective and useful when we are in those types of engagements. Crossing my fingers on that one. Uh, but moving on over to the scout helicopters, DICE is gonna be reducing the splash damage of the 25 millimeter cannon against infantry units. Uh, they must have realized that these were way too effective at taking out infantry. They were initially designed for taking out uh, vehicles, be them light armored or like Jeeps and things like that. But right now, they are basically just the overall better cannon to use. There's no reason to be using the miniguns. The 25mm cannons take out infantry way faster than they do, and they also have the capability of taking out vehicles. And so there's there's simply no reason to use the other customization options here. And so uh, what they're saying is that they're going to be reducing the splash damage. They're going to make it so that this is the preferred cannon of choice to take out vehicles, while if you want to use the minigun, that is going to be much more effective at taking out infantry. Uh, DICE is also dabbling on into some anti-tank balance and one thing that I know many will be thrilled about is that the law missile is seeing a nerf. This is meant to be a very easy to use fire and forget weapon. You, you shoot this at a vehicle and as long as you get it somewhat near it, it's going to lock on and do a solid 22 damage. But one of the problems with it right now is that it locks on a little bit too far, it, it's, its homing missile technology is a little bit too potent and you can reload them very very quickly and so you can fire a ridiculous amount of rockets at a tank and they can't do a whole lot about it they can even kind of duck behind cover but because the tracking system is so potent even if they are behind a massive rock you can still have it lock on as long as you're somewhat decent with it and so dice has realized that this is a little bit too good and so what they're going to do is reduce or they're going to make it so that the rocket has to be a little bit closer before it will lock on and they are going to be increasing the the reload time and so hopefully this will be the the nerf that it needs it's still going to be a very effective rocket i'm I'm assuming they're not going to nerf it into oblivion. It just simply won't be as potent as it once was. The final change that we're going to be looking at is the staff shell for the tank is seeing a 25% decrease in its damage. DICE's justification for this nerf is they're claiming that its ease of use is too high for the amount of damage it does. And while I do agree it's very easy to use, this feels like a band-aid fix because the reason why people use the, the staff shell isn't because it does a lot of damage, like that's a nice feature of it, but it's because of the glitch or what people are assuming is a glitch where when you switch between your main cannon, you fire that off, you switch to the staff shell, fire that off. When you switch back to your main cannon, it fires off instantaneously. There's no reload, nothing. It's ready to go. And so you can bombard an enemy tank and they have no way of reacting to it. And so it's easily the best way at taking out tank vehicles, like hands down, it is flat out amazing. Maybe this is just DICE's way of saying that this is the game mechanic that they had in mind when designing the staff shell. This is what they want, but it honestly just feels like a glitch like what we had back in, in Battlefield 3. And so maybe this isn't the complete notes. They will be making a lot of bug fixes when uh, the October, not October, the late January, early February patch launches. So we'll have to see if this is gonna go along with that and that glitch is gonna be fixed. But if that's not the case, it just kind of feels like a, a band-aid for what the real issue is. Uh, but yeah, those were all the major
major changes that I found to be important from this article. They were not all of the nerfs and buffs, so if you would like to read the entire article, I will leave a link down below in the description. But I would love to know what you think about all of these nerfs and buffs. Are you happy that this is the direction that Nice is taking? Are you a little sad? Is there a vehicle that you that you love to play in and it got a lot of nerfs? Let me know down below in the comment section. Uh, but until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.